is evidence that some human beings have been actually abducted by non-human entities. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true, because a book published later this week collects together some of their claims. Now, among the most remarkable is the case of Police Constable Alan Godfrey, who had a close encounter, a very real kind, on a dark winter's night in 1980. Now, while on patrol, he reported sighting what appeared to be a spaceship. And although he has no conscious memory of what happened next, under hypnosis, he recalls an alien called Joseph beckoning him towards a table. And then some smaller aliens and a dog appeared, tugging and pulling him towards the table and forcing him to lie down. And then Joseph began an examination of Police Constable Godfrey while the creatures tried to take his shoes and socks off. Now suddenly it was all over and Police Constable Godfrey was sitting back in his police car and now he is sitting with us here on the breakfast time sofa. It's an extraordinary story, isn't it, really? Uh, <clears throat> you, you recollect things in your mind and you recollect other things only as a result of hypnosis. Can we start with the first bit? What were you actually doing that night and what, what did you see? Well, I was driving the uh, Panda car uh, along Burnley Road in Todmorden and uh, I came across this strange craft blocking the road. Describe it to me. Well, it was about 20 feet high, about 14 feet wide. Uh, it was a diamond-shaped object, hovering about five feet off the ground. Now, at this point, you didn't see anybody, did you? Uh, no, I didn't see anything but other than that. Did you approach it? I got within about 20 feet of it. And then you went back to your car to report it, did you? No, I didn't get out of the car. Ah. I didn't want to get out of the car. You didn't? No. <laughs> but you, you got on the blur, did you? I got on the radio, both radios, the uh, VHF in the car and the UHF personally that we carry yeah and i got no response at all they didn't work no was that unusual not in that particular area there are black spots yeah. in the area but the, the radios have worked there since and then you left the scene did you the next thing i remember was i was at the other side of where the object had been driving the car away away did you report it when you got back i certainly did i yeah. thought you were crackers presumably yeah they did yeah. <laughs> now then as a result of hypnosis a lot of that story has been filled in, hasn't it? Now, what, is, what do you recollect from the result of the hypnosis? Well, as I say, I have no conscious memory of what I said under hypnosis. The only thing I, could, I can go off is uh, the hypnotic regressions were videotaped. Yeah. And uh, I, I think there was about three or four tapes done. And when I actually was allowed to see them at the end of the session, uh, it was quite frightening. What you'd said under hypnosis? Mm. So what, what, tell me the other story now, the one that they, they drew out under hypnosis. Well, under hypnosis, uh, when I see the craft itself, as I said before, I didn't get out of the car consciously. I find myself getting out of the car, and uh, for some reason, I have no idea why, uh, a strange, very powerful beam of light is shone towards me, which blinds me. I jump back in the car in panic, and then there is some sort of a blackout. And after the blackout, I wake up in some sort of an examination room. I see. So, uh, this spaceship, or whatever it is, uh, did you see that in your recollected...? Uh... Yes, everything in under hypnotic regression, everything was accurate right up to... The bit that... The when I got out of the car, it. yes. Okay, well, describe this creature to me, this man. Well, he was a humanoid, or of human appearance, is about six feet high. But not quite a human being, you think? Well, he had a human appearance. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a beard, and he, he wore some sort of a skull cap, and he wore like a white gown. He was very pleasant in appearance. He wasn't at all frightening to look at. Okay, now you've, you've got yourself into this room. What goes on there? Who else is there? <clears throat> there were, uh, I think I said there was eight. Uh, small three-foot eye creatures that transpiolated during the hypnotic regression uh, as robots. Uh, were you in a normal room or were you in a spaceship rather like uh, Doctor Who's time capsule? Were you in something as kind uh, of... It looked bigger than his capsule. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look very big, does it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> but inside it, yes, very, I would say it's very similar. And then they what? They tried to undress you, didn't they, at one point? Take your shoes and socks off. Why? Why was that? <laughs> Well, this is one of the funny things about it. When I got back to the station, I found that my left boot was split and I had a burn mark on the instep mm -hmm. of my left foot. And in the hypnotic regression, they actually examined my left foot. Now, that's remarkable to me. With the other evidence of the other police officers seeing the craft as well. Isn't it? 
How did your experience end in this place you were with, with these people? <clears throat> uh, the doctor woke me up. We never actually got to an ending. Yeah. Uh, I was wired up to some heart machines, yeah. and they completely went off the scale. I was in such stress that the, both doctors stopped, mm. stopped the hypnotic regressions. Now tell me, what do you make of it all? Do you believe now in UFOs, or, or what? <clears throat> Are you convinced that those things actually happen to you, or, or it's just in your mind somewhere as an imagination or a dream or something like that? Well, the UFO certainly exists. You're uh, sure? Of that, yes, it was a nuts and bolts craft. I'm, I think I'm quite capable of seeing something from 20 feet. Uh, well, if I said to you, anything, you take, uh, anything you say will be taken down and used in evidence, you would say that you saw that thing? Uh, yes, I would, swear on, I would swear on the Holy Bible. You what would. I saw that day, I've seen nothing of the like except in science fiction films. And what other thoughts have you had about the whole experience? Uh, the abduction part, well, I've thought about it. I've thought, well, perhaps it's something that I've read about and seen as Doctor Who. Mm. And because of my experience, it somehow got jumbled up. Yeah. Or it actually happened. Yeah. It's a good story, isn't it? I think it's wonderful. Yeah? I mean, that, that's a whole, a whole series of Doctor Who. I mean, what do you make of it, Colin? I mean, you, you work in the fiction of this. I mean, he is saying this isn't fiction. He is saying, I actually saw that thing. I mean, sitting here listening to the story, I cannot do anything but totally believe it. Yeah. And viewed by any objective standard, I think that it's perhaps naive of us to think that we are the only things that exist in this huge universe. Nicola, what do you think of all that? I, thought, I think it's rather pompous to think that we're the only people mm. around. Um, that there isn't possible, possibly life somewhere else without, you know, we don't have the facts of everything. So I think it's rather pompous to think we're the only people. Alan, and you I are taken very seriously, I mean, aren't you, by, by people who... who uh, who study these things. I mean, what, what do they say about your experience? Are they also convinced that you actually went through this experience and those things and those people were actually there? I think they are, yes. I think the UFO investigators that came to interview me, uh, one of them being a high-ranking police officer from the Greater Manchester Police Force, uh, he really gave me a grilling, yeah. uh, as he obviously is very experienced in it. And I think, well, they are convinced. Yeah. I mean, we did, I saw a UFO, mate. no mistake, they do exist. There is nothing on this earth will ever tell me any different. Well, I mean, if you say that, mm. I just cannot, as uh, Nicholas says, possibly believe otherwise. Thank you very much for telling the story. Absolutely fascinating, and uh, if anything else happens to you, let us know. <laughs> there we are. I'm sitting here in a cold sweat. Follow that, David Icke. <laughs> Actually, interestingly, wasn't there a, a couple in America called The Hills who mm. went through exactly the same experience? I think they went I through hip so, yeah. yeah, they went through hypnosis, and, and the way it's described it, I read an article, it's exactly the way they described it, you know? Up to the point where they went in the craft, they could remember everything, then bang. You know, and the hypnosis, they described the same sort of things as you did. There are many, many cases of uh, abductions in this country that I've, I've, I know about now. Oh dear. And there's quite <laughs> several under hypnotic regression. Uh, there were three girls in Shropshire, uh, they had a similar experience. And under hypnosis, they come up with very, very similar inside the McCraft and very similar beings in it. It I is think. a very, very convincing <laughs> story to tell. I think we'll move on quick. And nobody's going to shake you, are they? Thank you very much.